When sending emails to team members and colleagues who are now working from home, remember this, they have never been able to read your mind. But now they can't even read your facial expressions, your body language, the tone in your voice, or your general demeanor. Things that would have happened naturally during the course of the day. Or at least they could have walked past your desk and realized you hadn't thrown everything on the floor in a fit of rage. We want to make sure that we don't keep people guessing when we send emails and that we are very clear as to why the message is being sent, what's supposed to happen, and the response that we expect as a result. Adding confusion does not help the situation. Now, I bet you're thinking, I don't confuse people, at least not intentionally, and I would agree with that. Because when you send the message that says, call me when you get a chance, you know there's nothing bad about that. You know that there's nothing to not look forward to in that conversation. But the person receiving that message probably doesn't hear it the same way. Clarity is kindness, especially right now when sending emails. You can achieve clarity by using the ETA approach. It stands for Expectation, Timeline, and Action Item. It is an approach I have personally used for years and one that I have taught my corporate clients to use for years. The expectation is the reason the email is being sent in the first place. The timeline is either when something is going to happen or how long it will take. The action item is laying out next steps and maybe even who's responsible for those next steps. When you apply ETA to that earlier statement of call me when you get a chance, it could sound something like this. Hey, I really like the idea you brought to the table for our next virtual staff meeting. I have a couple of questions as to how we would implement that. Could you give me a call anytime after two o'clock? That sounds like a much different message than call me when you get a chance. Withholding those details and saving them for the big conversation, that is not communication, that is control. And you are adding to the stress level that colleagues and team members already feel when they are adapting to a new work environment. You are probably also adding to the number of emails that you have to respond to because people still need clarity and they are going to ask questions until they get answers, thus more emails for you to go through. Now, there are a couple of things to remember when we apply ETA. Number one, it does not make the emails longer. We still want people to be reading everything that we sent, which is three sentences and 15 seconds long. And number two, you don't have to have all of the information to share the information that you do have. So if you've got an issue with performance reviews, it's far better to send an email that says, I don't have all the details on the new performance review policy, but I can give you the high level approach. It should take about 10 minutes. Can we set up a call for tomorrow? A whole lot different than saying there's an issue with performance reviews, call me when you get a chance. Here's the bottom line with all of this. We don't want people to be confused or to be stressed out or to give them a chance to create their own story and then start spinning out. We do want to be proactive in our communication and in our messaging. ETA helps us do that. If you feel like you are constantly running up against a wall with your team right now in trying to overcome some communication barriers, let me know. Send me an email, jen, J-E-N, at talksportytome.com, and maybe I can help. I'd be happy to shoot a video and share the knowledge with everybody else.